From uh, UCLA, we have student athletes uh, Bryce Olford and Alonzo Ball. Um, gentlemen, welcome, first of all. Uh, can you characterize, Alonzo, the, the season thus far for UCLA and, you know, some of the high points and start from there and, you know, how, how you felt the season ended up? Uh, it's been a good season so far. You know, uh, I think we only lost four games. You know, it's always positive. And uh, we have a chance to do something special this year. So um, we're just trying to take every game one at a time and take it from there. Bryce, how about you? Yeah, um, going off what he said, I think it's been a very special year. I've uh, been here for four years now, and, and uh, this is the most fun that I've had playing uh, basketball at UCLA. And uh, like he said, you know, we got a lot of work left to do, but it's been a very fun year to date, and hopefully we can just finish it the way that we started. Okay, questions for the student athletes. Gentleman in the middle here. Ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times. Uh, guys, I know you want to get back to playing the way you did before the Pac-12 tournament. H how has that gone in practice? as you guys are, are trying to kind of recapture that joyous uh, run and fun style? Um, you know, that's our personality. Um, as individuals and as a team, uh, we love to have fun. Uh, we're kind of a goofy team in the locker room. We, we, we just like to have fun with each other. We're a very close team. So uh, I don't think it'll be difficult. You know, we had a little stretch where we didn't play very well. But, um, you know, we did that uh, in the middle of the conference season, and then we got right back to what we do. So uh, with this, with a new tournament and, and March Madness here, I think we'll be fine. Uh, Chip Reed, TV2, Kent State University. Um, obviously, guys have been used to late for the Pac-12, play big schools all year. How have you guys been preparing for Kent State in a small conference uh, uh, out of the MAC? Obviously, not a team that you would see very often uh, throughout the year. What's been the preparation like for the first game of the tournament? Well, in a tournament like this, conference don't matter. Every team is good. We know that, and uh, we got to come out here and play our game. Right hand corner. Tony Harvey, Sacramento Observer. Lonzo, uh, a year ago, you were in this town, you know, playing with your high school team, and you won a state championship with your brother. Uh, how, how does it feel, you know, to transition from one year to the next year, being in to a, another tournament, and a, probably a more impactful tournament? Yeah, it's a great feeling. Uh, this year, obviously, the stakes are bigger, being that it's college instead of high school. But any time you have a chance to go out and win a championship, you know, it's always a blessing. So I'm just thankful for the coaching staff, thankful for my teammates, and um, just excited to see what we can do this year. Josh. Josh, Peter with USA Today. Lonzo, what were your thoughts when you heard that your father had said that he could have killed Michael Jordan 101 in his heyday? And um, what would you tell people who might speculate this has become a distraction for you or the team? Um, he's been like that my whole life, so it's nothing new for me. Y'all just got a camera in front of his face now, so y'all seeing it for the first time. But um, to be honest, he probably he definitely thinks he can do that. I mean, uh, he's bigger than him, so I feel like that he can just back him down. That's what that's his thinking process. So, um, you know, he's never going to change just for the camera. He's been the same his whole life. Hi, Lonzo, Brian Bennett with ESPN.com. Just noticed that your thumb is still taped. Can you tell us just how you're feeling there? I'll be fine. Uh, just a sprain. Easy to play through. Joe. Joe Davidson, Sacramento. But can you take your dad out there in the front yard <laughs> or backyard? Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's old now. You know, back in the day, no, he was too big, too strong. But I think now, you know, once we get up and down a little bit, he'll uh, tap out. Duke Nguyen, LA Daily News. Bryce, when you guys talk about running, run and gun, kind of this uh, up-tempo offense. It doesn't seem like it's suited for a guy like Thomas, seven foot. What does he do to be able to fit into that system, even at his size? Uh, well, just because he's seven footer doesn't mean he can't run. Um, he, he moves very well to, for, for his size, and um, he's in as good a shape as, as all of us. So uh, he's adapted his game a little bit to our style, but you know he, he's one of our best shooters on our team, so he spaces the floor for us really well. and. Um, he does a great job of screening, and uh, we give him the ball in the post, and he does a good job there. So um, it might not be his exact style, but uh, he's fit in really well to what we do. Bryce, Pac-12, four teams, one number twos, two number threes, and one number number 11, USC. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, playing in the Pac-12 and, you know, you know, going through that process? And even though the Pac-12 doesn't get the respect that it absolutely deserved 
just talk about, you know, those other teams and the teams, a couple teams that didn't make it, you know, that made you, your guys roll a, a tough road. Yeah, um, like you said, the Pac-12 hasn't got a whole lot of respect this year. Um, only got four teams in the tournament, and USC barely snuck in. And uh, I thought they deserved to be in for sure, uh, having 24 wins. And um, they're a very good basketball team. And then you got uh, the top three teams in us, Arizona and Oregon, who I think all have a legit shot of being Final Four teams and title contenders. So um, some of the best individual players play in the Pac-12. You'll see that come draft time. Uh, they'll be top five picks from the Pac-12. Um, and some of the best teams are from the Pac-12. So um, it might have been a little top-heavy this year, but overall the Pac-12 in my four years has been very, very good. Ali Lieberman, SB Nation. Um, Londo, how are your brothers um, dealing with you in your first tournament game? Were they getting excited, and have they given you any advice? Uh, no, I'm the oldest, so they don't want really to give me too much advice, but um, I'm sure they'll be watching, and they're proud of me. Bryce. You've been past the first weekend of the tournament before. Can you just tell me about that experience? But also, you've seen what it takes to win a couple games in this tournament. You guys have much bigger hopes. You want to go all the way to the Final Four. Do you think this style, running as much as you do, can sustain? Is there enough defense? Yeah, you know, our, our defense has been um, asked about all year. Um, you're not the first to ask about our defense. It's It's been a question mark for a lot of people. Uh, but we're confident in our defense. Uh, we're not going to be a team that holds the team and teams into the low 60s or the 50s or something like that. But uh, this is a very smart group of, of, of people on this team. And when we need stops, we get them. And that's what's uh, gotten us to where we are so far. And uh, then our offense speaks for itself. And if, if we continue to do what we've done all year on the offensive end, then uh, if we can play our defense the way we have in February and March so far, then I think we'll be fine. Middle. You guys literally had the last tip off of the first round and, and the games on True TV. Do you guys find that a little bit odd? I mean, you're a three seed. You did some great things this year. You only had four losses, and it feels like you're kind of playing in the shadows of this tournament a little bit, at least to start. Um, to be honest, I, I haven't really thought about that at all. Um, you know, we don't try to focus on our TV exposure or, or – what people are saying in the media. We just try to go out and um, focus on Kent State right now. So um, we weren't, we didn't get to choose our, our time of where we play or where we play or, or who we play. We just go out there and try to do what we got to do. For Lonzo, I mean, obviously, a lot of people want to get here their whole lives. They dream about this moment. For you, in all likelihood, this is probably going to be your only one. How are you? approaching this tournament? The same way I play every game. Go out there, help my team, and I uh, do what we can to win. Bryce, can you talk about some more about your father and how, how fun that experience has been, kind of a once-in-a-lifetime experience? Yeah, um, obviously I've been through this for four years now with him by my side, and uh, it's been extremely fun. Uh, there's been ups and downs, obviously, from – uh, the challenges of being a coach's kid and dealing with that in L.A. and uh, the pressures that come behind that. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't trade my experience at UCLA in my four years for anything. And um, I don't know if I could have done it without him by my side. So uh, it's been an absolute blast. And um, I'm very, very thankful and blessed for the opportunity. Any further questions? In the back. Hey, Bryce, uh, since you have experience in this tournament, what kind of advice have you given to Lonzo about how th how this setting is different than the regular season? Um, to be honest with you, I don't have to, I don't have to give ed too much advice to Lonzo. He's, he's a very smart basketball player. Um, he knows what he's doing out there, and uh, he does a great job of, of not letting pressure get to him. Obviously, with who he is, there's a lot of pressure that comes behind uh, just the name that he has in college basketball. So... Uh, he hasn't let that get to him all year, and uh, if anything, I just give him little snippets of, of, of what I've been through in, in the tournament. Um, you know, I've been to the Sweet 16 twice, and just to treat it like every game, and you just heard him say that. So uh, he's got his head on straight. I don't need to tell him a whole lot. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Coach Alford will be out here in just a few minutes.
Is that is that right? Okay, we have now uh, Coach Steve Alford, UCLA, fourth year with the Bruins, 26th year overall as a head coach, and owns NCAA tournament wins at uh, four different schools, Missouri State, Iowa, New Mexico, and UCLA. Coach, uh, welcome to Sacramento. Thank you very much, and we're excited to be here. A um, little injury update. Um, we got TJ and Lonzo are back as, as near to 100%, I think. Uh, unfortunately, on Tuesday, EK uh, sprained a foot. So he's kind of day to day. He's getting treatment now. He's been getting treatment since Tuesday. So um, he's a little day to day. But other than that, um, we're very healthy and very excited to be here and uh, looking forward to the tournament. Coach, could you review your season a little bit? Um, you had some, some very big wins and some very big highs this year? Well, we did. Uh, we've been very consistent, and that's what I've liked about this team. The team's been so consistent from day one, uh, really all the way back to Australia. Uh, we lost a game in Australia, and that was probably the best thing that happened to us. Uh, pro team beat us over there, and uh, the guys, I think, got very close to one another at that point, and that was in August. Uh, we got back. School started in late September. Practice starts early October. Um, now we're 95 plus practices in and uh, 33 games in, and we've had a lot of consistency to uh, go through our schedule. And um, you know, we've won at the Pac-12 champs place. We've won at the SEC champs place, and we beat the the Big Ten champ as well at our place. So we have. We've had some very good wins, some key wins. We've lost four games on the year. Um, to three teams, and yet we've avenged all those losses. So to be at 33 games in and starting the national tournament, knowing that you've beaten everybody on your schedule, it speaks volumes of what these young men have been able to do because that's not easy to do. Okay, questions for Coach Alford, and please uh, state your name and affiliation. Uh, ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times. Uh, Coach, uh, is your expectation that EK will be able to play, or is that still kind of up in the air? It's up in the air. I mean, it's day to day. Um, he's got a sprained foot, and we're just – each day it's gotten better uh, since Tuesday, but um, it'll probably be a game day decision. We don't play till 7, so we'll have to see how things go today and tomorrow. Coach, Coach Alford. Yes. Uh, what do you know about Kent State, I mean, you know, playing these type of teams, uh, these lower seeds, because you've been – you didn't have a lot of experience, you know, in your college career and in your coaching career playing overseas. Right. You know, I'd probably know a lot more about the Mid-American Conference than most of our guys. Um, as I grew up 20 minutes from Ball State uh, in Newcastle, so um, I followed the Mid-American Conference for a long, long time. I have a lot of friends that played in that league. In fact, Eddie Schilling, who's on my staff, played at Miami, Ohio with Ron Harper, had a great career there. So I know about the conference very well. and. You know, winning nine out of ten at this level is not easy, and they've been able to do that. And they've won it, you know, continuing to fight, sometimes ahead, sometimes behind. But uh, it's going to give us a look that we haven't really seen in a while. Pac-12 usually is uh, big, big, uh, and there are a lot of four-guard lineups out there against Kent State. So we got to kind of go back to the way we were playing uh, in November and December as far as uh, the style that was being played against us. Uh, but Hall is a terrific big inside. That's a handful. He leads them in just about every statistical category. That's not easy. I think Walker and Edwin are special guards, um, and they surround them with guys that really understand how to play. So uh, it's a team that's hot. It's a team that's playing very, very well, um, and, and they're going to play a little bit differently than what we've been accustomed to just because of playing a lot of four-guard lineups. We don't see a lot of that in conference play. Steve, Joe Davidson, Sacramento B. How fun has it been for you to coach Lonzo Ball and also to coach your son over these years? He just said that he had a he's had a great time with you. Yeah, it's been a blast. You know, I, I've said it. You know, I've said it since coming to Westwood. It's a blessing. It's an honor. Um, you know, it's such a it's such a privilege um, to be there and to be able to coach there and and let alone be able to now go through four years with Bryce. First with my oldest son Corey, two years at. New Mexico and my last two years there and the success we had. And then the first two years we went to Sweet 16s, won a Pac-12 championship uh, while he was there. So that was fun. Now he's a video coordinator on our staff, so he's a part of it. Uh, and now Bryce with what he's been able to do, probably as, as critiqued and as evaluated as uh, any player that's played at UCLA in a long, long time. And 
he knew right from the beginning um, that's what being a coach's kid is all about. I was a coach's kid. Um, but I was a coach's kid at high school level, not uh, at the collegiate level at UCLA and Los Angeles and um, the tradition-rich place like UCLA is. So uh, very proud of him from a coaching standpoint of seeing how he's evolved and gotten better as a player each and every year. Very proud of him as a father of how he's handled everything. He's, he's been unwavering. Uh, he stays true to his beliefs. He's been a tremendous teammate great leader, somebody that guys want to play with and want to be around. And um, those are things from a father's standpoint of who he's grown as a person uh, that we've had a lot of fun with. Sharing that as a family obviously is a lot of fun. And then Lonzo, uh, Lonzo's just, you know, not only is he fun to coach, I was a player first, uh, he's fun to be on the same team with. You know, I, Tracy Murray does our radio who was a great shooter at UCLA, and I told him on a broadcast about two games ago, said, Tracy, if you and I were on this team, even at our age, we, we'd have a lot of fun shooting the ball with the way this ball moves and the shots that you get. And Lonzo has a lot to do with that. Lonzo's somebody that he can beat you by getting 15 rebounds, 15 assists, 25 points, guarding your best player on the other team. Uh, he's so disruptive to uh, the other team because of his talent and his skill set. But as good as he is from a skill set, he's a better person and he has a really good understanding of how to orchestrate a game. And that's, that's, those are hard traits. You know, there's a lot of guys out there skilled, but to orchestrate a game, where's the ball got to go, who's got to get a touch, who's hot, um, what kind of stop we got to get now, who we got to guard right. He's just got a, a great, great feel with that. So those two guys have been fun to coach, but this team's been fun to coach. It's been a, a joy to be around this group of guys because they're high-character guys. Josh Peter with USA Today. Lonzo said that he was not at all surprised to hear that his father said that he could have killed Michael Jordan 101. What did you think, and how would he respond to people who speculate this guy might be a dis, you know sort of a distraction or disruptive force of the program? Yeah, it's been no distraction at all to us, uh, and a lot of that has to do with Lonzo, just to who he is, and uh, strong-willed kid. He's way beyond. Uh, his 18 years of, of age. He, he's a special talent, both mentally and physically, and uh, it's how he's wired. Uh, he's been built this way. He's been built for this. That's why I'm excited. I, I can't wait till 7 o'clock tonight, tomorrow night, to where we can tip this thing and uh, get this tournament underway because uh, this is what he's been built for. This is what he's been wild, wired for, and I think the 23, 33 games we've been through plus the practices uh, this team has kind of been building towards this. Doesn't mean it's going to be ultra successful, but I do like coming into the tournament the way we are with the group of guys that we're going into it with. Um, these are the guys I want to go into battle with. And uh, obviously, Lonzo's a huge piece to that. Mark Wicker, LA Daily News. Uh, Steve, according to the stats, the new stats that, that you see all the time now, uh, teams with high tempo don't fare as well in this tournament as the teams that try to slow it down. But you've been able to run pretty much when you've wanted to most of the year. How do you do that against a team that doesn't want to run with you? Well, we got to be true to who we are. Um, you know, I thought in the Pac-12 tournament, it was the first time that that wasn't, not only was it not our tempo, but uh, our offense was not near as good. Our efficiency all year long, we've been pretty much the number one offense efficiency all year long. You know, we've had staggering numbers, like 122, and the benchmark's like 110. If you can have an efficiency of about 110, that's a really good offense. We've been at 122 for most of the year, and those two games in the Pac-12 tournament, we were at 100. So that was a drastic drop. Um, now what you've seen defensively, um, I think the two losses in a row, I think losing to Arizona at home and at SC, um, got our guys' attention. Our defensive efficiency was around 105, 106. And those 11 games since then, we've won 10 out of 11, and our defensive efficiency has been at 96, benchmark being 95. So we're getting a lot closer to what we're wanting to do defensively. So I don't think it's so much about changing anything or doing something, to whether it's Kent State or, who, or whoever it may be. We've talked about this week, just be who we are. Be true to what we do. The ball's got to move. I thought the ball stuck a little bit in, in Vegas. I didn't like our ball movement. I didn't like our screening and our spacing. We've been so good at that all year. And so that's what we've really gotten back to in the last five days. And then just continue to refine, kind of reboot what we're doing defensively. But 
I don't think you're going to see us doing something different to change tempo because we have been able to win games with a slower tempo and keep the efficiency up. So if it is a slower tempo, that's not as, as, um, that's not as drastic to me as does it change who we are. We got to stay who we are offensively and defensively. You really only have gone eight deep most of the season. If EK is unable to play, how will that change your rotation? Well, well as you know, we, we've played seven a lot. We've had uh, because we've gone really outside the last couple of weeks, three weeks. We've had either GG out, Tom out for a while, TJ missed uh, two games for us, uh, and EK has been in and out most of the season. So there, we've had plenty of opportunities, maybe twelve plus games where we had a seven-man rotation. So we've got experience doing that. We hope that's not the case, but at least we do have something that we can go back on. To, look, we've played, you know, we got the opportunity to go four guards because those four guards are special. So if we have to play some more four guards, uh, we've been able to do that when we've had a seven-man rotation. So we got to wait and see how EK does here over the next 24 hours. But if by chance he's not playing, we've had success playing seven guys. Coach Mark Billingsley, Manhattan Mercury, uh, two-part question. When and how did you hear about Crean at Indiana's firing today? Two, is that a goal of yours professionally to get back to your alma mater? And if so, would you take a phone call at the end of the season? Yeah, you know, I don't know how I found out. It's just news. Um, but it, it's March Madness. And unfortunately, in our business, there's, you're either – you're either on top or something like this is happening to all of us. Um, I've been in a long time, 26 years now. So I've seen things evolve. I've seen how things go that way. And, um, but that's never been something that I look at, whether it be that job or other jobs. It's, um, I learned a long time ago when I was probably four or five years into the job, I started interviewing for some jobs that that's, all, that's what I wanted. Uh, when I quickly trusted God and trusted you know, my faith, uh, my journey has taken me to places I had no idea that that was going to be my journey, and I've fallen in love with every spot. I've met great people, great institutions, and uh, obviously um, that was 30 years ago. I was a part of that. I stood on stage with a great group of guys and won a national championship. It's my home state. I played there. Um, so obviously all that comes up, but um, I love UCLA. I love Los Angeles. Um, it, you're talking about arguably the greatest brand uh, anywhere on the planet. And um, we got things going at a very high level now, and we're very excited about it. And we're excited about being in this tournament and seeing what we can do in this tournament. That's really going to be my comment, you know, about that situation because I don't want that to uh, be what this is about. This is about us. This is about what these group of guys are doing, and that's really where my focus is. Steve Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck News. A lot at this tournament, the spotlight's been on Villanova, Kansas, Duke, Carolina, some of those programs. What are your thoughts about your program, Arizona and Oregon, how they stack up, how the Pac-12 will stack up, and how much damage can they do in this tournament this year? Yeah, and Dana and Sean, have I, we've all talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, and I think it, it is important because um, you hear a lot you know, about, well, the Pac-12's it's been this long since we've been in a Final Four and those type of things. All I will say is it's hard, uh, regardless of what those teams that you just talked about. Uh, it's hard. It's you start with 351 teams, it gets reduced to 68. Then you got to win six games on neutral, all six on neutral courts. Um, it is a hard championship to win, and I think we all understand that. Um, but I think Sean likes his team, Dana likes his team, I, I like my team. Um, we've got chances. We've got opportunities. I, I think when you look at, you know, that AP top 10, um, I, I told the team that, that um, the final poll came out. I think we were eighth. Um, Oregon and Arizona, right? Arizona a little bit higher. Or Oregon might have been seventh or ninth. But three of us in the top 10. And yet all the pundits, if you listen to that night, somebody was picking that team to win it in that top 10. So, you know, we've had a great body of work to get to this point. Uh, but now you got to go play the games, and you got to play good basketball. Whether you're Oregon, Arizona, ourselves, or any of those schools that you mentioned, you're not going to advance in this tournament not playing good basketball. So you've got to play uh, your game. That's why I answered a question a minute ago. You just got to be yourself. Uh, you can't. This isn't the time to. We're 33 games in this. All of us have had a lot of success in our league. Um, 
but we've got to play. All of us have to play good basketball, and we're all pulling for one another. Um, obviously, that would be something very special to meet in Phoenix because uh, you finally got a Final Four out west, and we've been wanting that for a long time. So, uh, wishing Arizona the best, wishing Oregon the best. SC advanced last night, so um, and obviously, I want the best for us as we tip tomorrow night as well. Over here, Steve uh, Brian Bennett with ESPN. Uh, you, uh, you, the defense has been a kind of a focus for you guys, for pundits and that sort of thing. Bryce earlier sounded very confident. He said that you guys could get stops when you needed, and you mentioned kind of refining the defense here the last week or so. Where did you feel like your defense was in the Pac-12 tournament, and what, what things do you still need to improve going forward here? Well, I thought we had some slippage. I thought we had slippage both offensively and defensively in the Pac-12 tournament. And um, we're totally healthy, not an excuse, but we just seemed out of sync. Um, We've been able to reboot things here in the last four or five days. I, I've loved the guys' in excitement. I think this is the tournament um, that they've really been gearing and looking for. We just won nine, ten games in a row um, against Pac-12 opponents, um, which that's hard to do. So we went through all of February undefeated, first two weeks in March undefeated. So, um, you know, that was a grind to be able to do that. You're playing teams multiple times. We just played at Arizona about a week earlier. We'd played – SC at home two and a half weeks before that. Um, so I think getting to new opponents in a different landscape will help our guys' mindset. But I like where we're at defensively. You know, we've been critiqued at that end probably as hard as anybody. You know, they've kind of forgotten about how efficient our offense is. You know, there are other teams around the country that are, you know, incredible defensive teams, but I don't know about how they are offensively. Uh, but their offense doesn't get critiqued. That's, that's Los Angeles. It's UCLA. It's it's where the bar is um, at UCLA. But uh, I love where we're at right now, uh, and hopefully we'll play to that tomorrow night. Uh, Steve, uh, Tim Bonas from the Washington Post. I appreciate you not wanting to talk about Indiana, but just to circle back to it a little bit, um, are you concerned at all that, that any talk about that job, given you mentioned your myriad connections to it in the state, might be a distraction for your team as you try to go through the tournament? No. No, none. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I can't control what gets talked about, but no. <laughs> it's, we're, we're very focused on what we got to do. One last question, Ben. I know Bryce wants to continue his career after this in the NBA, but uh, do you see him as, as a head coach someday? I don't know. He's never talked about that. Corey, uh, the, the oldest, has always wanted to get into coaching, but I, I don't know, he's never said anything about um, coaching the game. So I don't know if that's what his – uh, his line of work is going to be done when he's done playing or not. But uh, hopefully he has a, a long career ahead of him because I think he's talented enough. Um, but I don't know if it will be coaching. That, that We'll have to wait and see. I know Corey, that's the path he wants, but uh, Bryce may want a, a different path. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Kansas State will be next up.